Hey, this is Norfee from Epic Flail, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a technique you can use, which I guarantee will improve your Warhammer 40,000 results. And it's not just playing Eldar or Gene Steeler Cults, which actually is probably the most effective way to improve your results at Warhammer 40,000. Just play those until they're nerfed, which hopefully is quite soon, because it's much needed. Please be soon. Okay, so you've got a list that you're happy with, you're going to a club, you're reading articles, you're absorbing information about the game, but there's a process you can go through when you get to a table, whether it be at a local club, where there's a competitive game at a local club or at a tournament, by which I guarantee will improve your results. And if you look at the best players, the players that win tournament after tournament or place well regularly or out playing for WTC teams, I guarantee this is a process they go through as soon as they get to the table and know what their opponent's doing. And that process is basically understanding how you are going to win the game. And that sounds quite a simple question. We're going to win, you're going to try and win the game by scoring more points than your opponent. But the key process you've got to go through is how do I apply the strengths of my list towards the weaknesses of my opponent based upon the conditions that we have in front of us? Okay, so it's basically understanding when to play your list in one certain way and when to play your list in another way. And what you tend to find is the best players are able to get the most out of their list. Sometimes you'll see a result that will shock people. How's that guy managed to get that result with that army? The reason they've done that is they'll have played the list in a way which will have caught people out. They will have demonstrated flexibility in the play style, a way to adapt to different conditions on the table, rather than just playing it the same way every game in the same style. It's tactical flexibility that wins people events in games. So we're going to look at some examples of that in a second on our live stream that we have here on the show. But before that, I'm just going to talk about that process that you can go through at the table in a little bit more detail. So the first part is understanding your opponent's list. What is your opponent bringing? What do the models and synergies that that list has do on the table? And how do you think, what's your analysis of how you think your opponent is going to play the game towards your list? Often, particularly when people first start playing competitively or just start the game, they just have a list, they know it does a certain thing, they rock up at a table and they just do the thing. And a lot of people enjoy playing like that, a lot of casual games are just like, here's my list, I'm going to do some stuff, let's roll some dice. That's absolutely fine, that's fun, that's great, I enjoy playing like that. But sometimes at that higher level when it's about, well, I want to, lead, I, I want to win this game, then you've got to get to the table and really understand not just what your list can do and, and is, capable of, is capable of, but also what, you, what can your opponent do. So the first part is, what is my opponent's list? I get to the table, first question I want to know, regardless of the game that I'm playing, is what's your list? Tell me your list. And then very quickly at the table, trying to absorb or recall as much information as possible about the capability of that list. It might be that you play loads of games and you do that very quickly. You see the list, oh yeah, cool, Gene Steeler Colts, I know that list, I instantly know what you're going to do. I've seen multiple streams of that list, I've played against that list, bang, fine. But if, if that doesn't happen, if you're like, mm, I'm not sure, then you must use that time to just get as much information as you can in a, in a reasonable and fair way from your opponent. You know, can I see the unit card for that, please? Can I just have a quick flick through your stratagems? Can I just confirm a few questions that I've got about the list? Now, what you're not going to be able to say to your opponent is, oh, can you tell me how this plays and what you're going to do? That obviously would be an unfair question that you might get answered at a club night, but you're not going to get answered at a tournament. But you should definitely, as quickly as possible, get to a point where you feel like you've got a good assessment of what your opponent's list is capable of doing. The next thing, this is something I used to enjoy doing loads when I played War Machine competitively, was try to understand the individual, the opponent, the person I was stood opposite. And you could go quite deep with this, and it's, you know, this might be a step or a process that some people haven't really thought about or skipped through, but there are certain characters in every community and there'll be a certain play style or approach that they take during the game, and I would really try and understand and figure out whether it was just from reading the person at the table and having a chat with them or whether it was from a player that I'd known for a long time. Try and quickly understand how that individual is known for playing that list or wants to play that list. So once you've got an idea of the list and the opponent, maybe you know a bit about their play style that will give you some insights. The next thing you need to think about is what's in front of me on the table? What's the terrain set up like? And how does that affect my list and my opponent's list? Are there some strengths and weaknesses that I could use on the table. Maybe your opponent's playing Imperial Knights and he's got towering and the, the you know the, there's some areas of the board that they're just going to be able to absolutely 
devastate and wipe out because of that ability. Or maybe you can abuse some bits of the terrain based upon the number of vehicles your opponent might have, or maybe vehicles that you've got. So really understanding the terrain is the next part. Then the scenario, what's the scenario? Uh, you know, Is this a good scenario for you? Is this a, a good scenario for the opponent? Is it a neutral scenario? How's the terrain layout interact with the scenario? Okay, so that's the basic principle. The basic principle is getting to the table taking in all the information that's available and then creating a plan which best utilizes the advantages that your list has and best compensates for some of the disadvantages. So to give you an example of this in action, let's, let's first jump in and watch a game or watch some clips of a game from Tom versus Liam recently on the stream. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at Tom's list and see what he's taking. So Tom's playing Adeptus Custodes. He's got Trajan in there, Blade Champion, Shield Captain, two units of Custodian Guard, two units of Prosecutors, unit of Valerius Custodians, the Deep Striking Lads, two big units of Custodian Wardens, which is kind of the mainstay, you know, main centre, the heart of his army. He's got the Grav Tank and a, and a couple of Assassins. And then he's up against Liam, who's playing Marines. Liam's list has got some real tasty stuff in there. He's got Lamartes, he's got the Apocryphery, Def Company Marines, you know, two sets of Def Company Marines with Jump Packs, Desolation Squad, Maximum Desolation Squad, that is, Hellblaster Squad, some Infiltrators, Librarian Dreadnought, loads of Snipers, and then a Thunderfire Cannon. So these two guys got to the table, and as soon as they got to the table and started thinking about this game and deploying, they'll have been weighing up what's their opponent's list trying to do, and how do I apply my strategy in a way Gives, that gives me the best chance of winning this game. And this was a great game. It's a really close game. And the reason it was a close game was both these players, you know, they, these guys go to tournaments, you know, they, they, they know what they're doing. They've been playing for a long time. They're both in, you know, competitive one of 40,000 teams. Both these lads got to the table and instantly started utilising and deploying their army in a way which played into the advantages of the list and tried to minimise the risk. So Tom knows that the best chance he's got against his Blood Angels is pushing... On scenario, he knows that he just if he sits off the points and he doesn't make this a quick scoring game, that the Desolation Squad, the Hell Blasters, you know, the deep striking uh, units that Liam's got, the Scout Snipers are just going to attrition him and wear him down. He knows that the best application of his list is aggressively asserting into the middle of the board with those big units that have got four, or six, four up invulnerable save and just sitting and holding, tra holding tight, knowing that he's going to take some shots, he's going to get hits off those Desolation Marines, the Hellblasts are going to come down and, and start going absolutely crazy, he's going to get stuff deep striking on him, but if he can assert himself in the middle of the board and do what's called threat saturation, then he has the best chance of winning this game. This is a technique where you basically give your opponent a lot of targets to shoot at, and you rely on the defensive capabilities of the list. It's a threat saturation tactic. And you can see Tom's got loads of stuff just sat in the middle of the board. Liam, on the other hand, knows that if he play, he would play into Tom's hands by doing the same thing. If he was like, oh, yeah, let's score some points. Let's get as many points as possible. He would know that he would, he would lose to Tom. In melee, those custodies would wear him down. They would out-tank him in melee, and it would go badly. Liam knows that he needs to, okay, fine. Tom's pushed the centre hard, and he's trying to threat saturate me. So let me start to really focus, fire some units and create an advantage in a particular area of the board. And then later game, push much harder to play for scenario and score points. So both these players have recognised where the strength of the opponent is and they're playing their list to mitigate against that. Liam knows that if he just went toe-to-toe -to -toe and, OK, fine, yep, yeah, I'm just going to score points, I'm going to match you for points in the first part of the game, he'd get absolutely wiped out. And Tom knows that if he sits off and tries to protect his units and not just put everything out there and try and score, Liam's going Liam's to sit on the same scenario score with him, attrition him better, and then win the back half of the game. So because both these players went through that process of what's my opponent taking, how's my opponent playing, what's the terrain like, what's the scenario, it was a really close game, it was a really, really tight game. So in this second game, this time Tom, with a very similar list, is up against Luke's Demons. Luke's Demons, he's got quite a scary list with a Bloodthirster, Fate Weaver, Bellacore, you know, tons of flamers and stuff that can just get in the way. Demonettes, Nurglings, some Flesh Hounds. And, you know, a very different, a very different list, a very different game to the game against Liam with his Blood Angels. 
But Tom knows that Luke's list is capable of doing a lot of damage on an alpha strike. It's got a lot of big demons that can come in, really hard hitting, and you know, through volume of attacks, we'll be able to get round and through Tom's invulnerable save. I'll certainly put Tom in a position where those vulnerable saves are going to be, you know, pretty, pretty devastating if he doesn't pass them. So what happens in this game is Tom, rather than over asserting his resources and threat saturating, instead what he does is he starts a peace trading game with Luke. And Luke plays his game really tight. Again, this is another game that is really, really close. It's really tight because both players were constantly recognising what their opponent was capable of doing and basing their strategy around the threats that were presented to them. They weren't just like, this is how my list plays, off we go and play it. You know, Instead, they were, they were applying their list in ways that gave them the best possible chance of winning the game. And it got really, really tight, really, really close. What is interesting about this one is Tom applies a very different tactic. Rather than going, I've got four up in vulnerable saves, let's just throw my guys absolutely everywhere and really try and pressure scenario early on. Instead, he starts a peace trading with Luke. What Tom wants from this matchup is he wants to draw out those hard-hitting, those dangerous demons with as, as minimal amount of points as possible. So kill Luke's screen, make sure that he's going to have to put those big lads, those hard-hitting units on objectives and, and, and then finish them off. So you see as the game goes on, that's basically how it plays out. Tom starts to put some of his resources in the middle of the board to try and draw out Luke, to try and get him to commit those big lads, the blood first, the Bellacor, you know, all that heavy hitting stuff, and then win on and then you know go through and try and win on scenario. So a different technique and a different style to the previous game that I showed. The previous game, Tom asserted himself really strongly at the beginning of the game, get as many points as possible. Whereas this game, different opponent, different threats, different play style, different terrain setup, apl applies his list very differently, much more defensively, and tries to bait and bring Luke in with a focus on winning the game in the latter half of the game. Whereas, the, whereas his previous game score as many points as you can early on and allow yourself to get trishioned hard in turn four, turn five, knowing that you've already asserted yourself strongly on scenario. So that for me there in our stream have been two really good examples of the same list being played in two quite different ways and of you know three players over two games all understanding at the table how their list is going to play versus their opponent. And I think that's a really good process and thought, you know, thought process for people to go through in one of 40,000. And I think that's a good checklist that you can use at the table. But I'd love to hear from people that have watched, what kind of processes do you use when you get to a table? Share your experiences of that, like, you know, that, that kind of tick box in your head. What do you think about and go through in your head when you get to the table and how successful have you been in that process? Anyway, that's enough for me. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and all that jazz for more. Really appreciate everyone's support of the channel. And join us every Thursday evening, either at 6.30 or 7.30 GMT, for a live stream game of Warmer 40,000. There's both competitive and casual content on there. We've got another stream next Thursday. So do tune in. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. It was really awkward. I like hiccuped right at the end. I'll try that again. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Cheers.